I am standing inside the old Kilmore Jail. This was a jail for many years in the town of Kilmore in the state of Victoria in Australia. It was purposely built for like a, you could look at it like a remand prison. Kilmore Jail is definitely haunted. Show yourself. We do have a nurse that does like, that does like the boys. Aroused. Ooh, that got them gone. There are things that go on inside this jail, things that people can't explain. Do you hear something I hear? Yeah. Like something musical? Yeah. Like a ting or something like that? This one's freaking me out. <laughs> you hear that? That was in the corner. I did hear a noise down here. Thank you. I thought I said I should go, like a woman saying I should go. Are you trying to open the cell? Sounds like the storm is low. That door just opened. There is, this. the cell can make you feel uncomfortable. What the hell was that? I am standing inside the old Kilmore Jail. This was a jail for many years in the town of Kilmore in the state of Victoria in Australia. We've come here tonight because we've heard a lot of stories of paranormal activity, that there are things that go on inside this jail, things that people can't explain. A lot of the history of the old Kilmore Jail was lost to time because when it was decommissioned, it was turned into a factory, a restaurant, a cafe, and a lot of other uses over the years. And it looks a lot different than it did back in the years when it served as a jail incarcerating this town's most violent or criminal elements. I'm standing here by myself right now because unfortunately on the way here, Dave got a very bad migraine and he wasn't able even to get out of bed to come down here. So he may join later on depending on how he's feeling, but I'm actually being joined here tonight by four people that are gonna be investigating with me and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait for you to see who that is. So let's jump into the history and the hauntings of the old Kilmore Jail. The jail came about in um, 1859 and was a jail from 1859 through to 1883 and as I was saying, cold was discovered in this area, so it was basically a prison for a need that came into the area because gold was discovered in Kilmore. Basically, the first discovery was uh, 1850, and then it basically went from 1850 to 61. So they obviously had an increase of population in the area, which uh, Goldfield also brought crime. So they needed to build Kilmore for that. It was purposely built for like a, you could look at it like a remand prison per se, because most of the cells here are on, uh, in the middle of the jail. So it was like a holding prison. Um, you didn't serve a lot of time here if you received a sentence. Where Kilmore was significant was that it paved the way through to Sydney. So you, it, Kilmore was kind of like, like a hub. This would have been like a one-stop shop if you were gonna be going through to Sydney because there was a courthouse here, there was a hospital here as well. And again, it would have been a mixture of prisoners. So you would have had young prisoners and old prisoners. And as you can see, the cell's pretty small. So, and it would have been nothing to have up to six prisoners in cells. There are some cells that were in the middle, unfortunately, that, that um, aren't here anymore. But I guess Kent Kilmore was unique that it had two holding cells on the outside that actually had nothing to do with Kilmore Prison per se in here, meaning that they weren't serviced by a superintendent. The one death that we do definitely know and can confirm is that there was a young prisoner that would have been in the laundry area that would have had a, that actually had a boiling pot of water poured over him and he ran from the laundry to what would have been the well and he jumped in um, to the well, obviously, to try and cool himself down. Not very long, like maybe two to three days later, he, he um, died of those injuries. But I guess, relatively speaking, you got it on, in the gold fields, there would have been some pretty nasty people that would have been kept here because I guess when you look at the modern prison systems, I guess there is a way, I guess, of screening 
clients and putting them in particular divisions because of their crime, that wouldn't have been here. It would have been, you've broken the law, you've done a crime, we're going to just pop you in here. And the other interesting fact that we do know of Kilmore that there was a female prisoner here, there is a small area that they would have treated for female prisoners. But I guess in the time it's pretty harsh when you think of it that a woman, if her husband would have went to the gold fields in search of riches or anything like that and he passed away, she would have been considered destitute um, and no way of caring for her or her child. So she possibly would have come to a place like that. And that's pretty horrific when you think of that. Obviously the very first time that I came to Kilmore was as a guest. And I guess my first paranormal experience here was what we refer to as the rock room or the labour yard. And it was the smell of, distinctly of cigar smoke. And at first I thought someone was manipulating the environment and I'm looking to see if someone was pumping smoke in. So that was kind of like the very first paranormal um, experience for me. I've been coming here now um, for about eight to nine years. So there's loads of different paranormal experience. We have a very fond relationship with the child spirit. We have come to call him Mikey here. We are not too sure if he's Butterfactory era or prison era, because I guess obviously there would have, as I was stating before, there would have been children here when it would have been um, prison era. So. There's loads of activity. One of the unusual things that we've been getting, which fascinates us, are light anomalies and different colours. So blue lights and red lights and, but intelligent lights, if that makes sense, not just kind of floating around doing nothing. So the cell, interestingly enough, um, is an interesting space. We have an interesting phenomenon that kind of happens at about four o'clock in the morning where some people have referred to it as a possible portal or something like that opening because of, um, I use dowsing rods and the dowsing rods make an unusual motion in, um, in this area. So we actually have a lot of paranormal equipment that we use. There is, this, the cell can make you feel uncomfortable. We've learnt that we possibly have a priest. We don't know why he's here and he has a tendency to make males feel quite uncomfortable at times. In the laundry area, it can make you feel really uncomfortable. In that area, we actually um, have a spirit that can open doors. For me, sometimes it's the physical paranormal experience that kind of blows my mind when you have a spirit that can physically move an object. So. Um, and when that spirit is in that laundry area, it can be very unusual because you get, he can't, we, we refer to him, him as he because he's identified himself as a male and he can come with a very sulfuric, rotten smell um, and that can make people feel really, really uncomfortable and to the point where people need to actually leave the area. In the hospital, not so much ladies, but we do have a nurse that does like, that does like the boys. <laughs> and if you say that you have an injury, the nurse is very happy, yeah, to come along and help the gentleman. But ladies, sorry, if you're not feeling well in the hospital, she'll, she'll leave you that way. <laughs> She's, yeah, so, um, and I guess that that's the, the, the beauty of it. We have quite a lovely collective of, of spirits um, here from children to priests, to, um, to prisoners. We certainly do get a lot of different uh, activity, which is, um, yeah, which is really good. Kilmore Jail is definitely haunted and I believe we get the activity that we do is because we are still telling the stories that we are. We're still breathing life. We're giving opportunity for those spirits to still have a voice and that's, that, that's important, they've still got a story to tell. And what we find it interesting is, as we said before, because the history is non-existent, it's almost like some spirits are filling us in the history, filling us in on the unknown, giving us things to go, and then try and find out whether that's, yeah, whether, it, whether it's true or not. But I think it's great that other investigators come and visit the jail, so it's not just us telling the story as well and I think that that's important and I think that things like this are so important because as I said before we're such a young country 
with a young history per se, and we don't have a lot. So I think that when you have a historical building and historic site, it's so important to keep breathing life into that. All right, so we are getting ready to start investigating the Kilmore Jail here in Kilmore, Victoria, Australia. It is very creepy in here, and one of the areas that they talked about there being a lot of activity was the laundry because it's one of the only sites where there was an attack that led to a documented death that they know of, where a man had boiling water thrown on him, ran out to cool down, he jumped in the well, but then three days later succumbed to his wounds and died. So. This is an area known to have paranormal activity. Like I said, Dave is not here tonight because he got a migraine right before we came here to investigate the Kilmore Jail, but you are not going to believe who's here with me right now. Hey! Amy, <laughs> what's up? Well, thanks for having us, but also, you know, we could not let you do this place alone because honestly, it's a little bit scary here. So, yeah. <laughs> We're in this together. <laughs> is, is, is this your first time investigating the Kilmore Jail? It is. It is. But already tonight, it's been pretty interesting. So I think we might be in for a ride. Yeah, we did a live stream with Adelaide's Haunted Horizons, who is off on the other side of the jail doing their own session right now, Allison and Kagan. Really interesting session, apparently. I don't know. I was in the headphones, so I'm just yelling out words from what they said, from, from what you just said, and from what Jared you had said it was a really good session <laughs> it was really good i thought it was really good and and i i feel like there's a lot of interactions with me personally as well during that one so i can vouch it was so weird but it was also kind of fun and just a lot of the things that were going on just kind of clicked and made sense it it was a really cool interaction but yeah it's interesting because being on, the head, being on the headphones, I didn't really get to experience it, so I'm excited to watch it back. So as soon as you're done watching this video, go over to Adelaide's Haunted Horizons on Facebook, find that live stream, which will be linked below in the description, and go and watch it, because we had some really, really, really creepy experiences. If you wanna see the whole thing, go watch it, and go like Adelaide's Haunted Horizons on Facebook, and go subscribe to them on YouTube. So, but we're gonna get started here in the laundry, and as you can see, there are very creepy mannequins and that makes it all the more fun. We love mannequins on Paranormal Quest, right? We do. We love the mannequins on Paranormal Quest. I hate them. This one here has got me. He got me good. <laughs> <laughs> What's the phobia that you're afraid of mannequins? What's that called? Let us know down in the comments below. What's that phobia called? There's a specific phobia for mannequins. So to start off here in the laundry, of course, you can't investigate with Amy's crypt without using the ghost tube. So we're gonna use that. We also have K2 meters, the flux over here on the chair, Mel meter, REM pod. We're gonna see if anyone wants to come out and talk to us and interact with us. So let's get started. If there's anyone here with us in the laundry, anybody that was a prisoner here at the Kilmore Jail, my name is Ryan and this is Amy and Jared and we don't mean you any harm. There's a lot of lights, a lot of things that we've set up around this room, around the laundry, that are gonna let you show us that you're here. Knees. Knees. Okay, who? Are you somebody's niece? Are you looking for your niece? What's her name? You don't have to be shy. There's nothing in here that can hurt you and we're not here to hurt you. Maybe you can walk up to my hands. Is there a smoker here? We also have some cigarettes up here. If you'd like a smoke, just go and grab it. Or if you don't like them, you can knock them on the floor. Can you make another noise for us? Earlier I heard a very loud noise in this room in the corner. 
We also have something here that will play music. Just, that's me. Just like this. If you like that, you just need to walk up to it. Come stand next to me and we can listen to the nice music. Can you tell us about the cloves on the mannequins? Those are all original, apparently, by the way. What was it like to live here at the jail? I bet it was pretty, pretty sad. I bet you uh, had a pretty rough life when you lived here. Can you tell me about these doors here? Were you a prisoner? Did you work here? Are there children here? Hear that? That was in the corner. Right by that mannequin. <laughs> if the mannequin moves, I'm leaving. <laughs> Just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> there you go. You figured out how to get us to leave if you move a mannequin. We'll be out of your hair. Do you hear something okay here? Yeah. Like something like musical? Yeah. Like a Ding, ding, or something like that. A high-pitched note. Oh, I can't see a thing, but yeah, it was like, um, it's weird because the music box, there's only a music box in here, right? Right. But it sounds like a little bit of a music box. That was again. So weird, there's nothing in there, but I definitely heard that. You all heard that noise though, right? I heard, yeah. yeah. It was like ting, 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 ting. It's none of the equipment. No. I just got real cold chills on my legs, like. Do you like music? Is that an alarm? I think it's a bird. Yeah, it was one of those birds outside. When you were in here, you probably didn't get to hear music. You didn't get to listen to anything because you were locked up. But if you'd like to hear music, all you have to do is stand right here. <gasps> it's me. Oh. Let's hear that. So over there behind Amy, there's a little triangle that has lights on, and if you get close to it, it'll light up just like that. Can you go to the other side of it? Can you tell us about the laundry? What about this light right here? Let me show you how to use this one. If you get close to it, do you see all those lights? They're really pretty, aren't they?
We brought it all for you, lights and music and anything that you could ever want or need to entertain you while you're locked up. Cigarettes. Show yourself. Are you coming out? Can you not see us? Can you only hear us? Eight. Eight. Is that how old you are? Maybe how many of you are here? You know, Allie told me that there's a little kid that they see running around here. Are you here from the prison or are you here from the butter factory? Did you used to make butter? Her. Her. Do you know if it's a little boy or, or girl, Ryan? I can't remember if she said it was a little boy or a little girl, to be honest. I know there's a little boy in the um, night room. Maybe you want to talk to me. Or well, you said her and niece. Can you tap on something or, or knock on something for us? We would really appreciate that. How about this? What if I turn- Be quiet. <laughs> Okay, maybe you want to talk to me. I would love to talk to you. But again, my name is Amy. I would love your name. I did hear somebody in here earlier. If you can share your name with me, maybe we can be friends. I would absolutely love that. In fact, I'll come in. This is where I heard the noise earlier. Danger. Oh, for God's sake. Am I in danger or maybe? The... <laughs> what does that mean? I don't really like that it said that. Can you move something in here? You can't, you're not allowed to hurt any of us, but if you would like to move something, you can throw something if you'd like. If that'll help you get the anger out, the aggression. Very quiet so far. Mm -hmm. right here. Just give me one second here, okay? You okay? Yeah. Aroused. Ooh, that got them going. Ryan, what are <laughs> you doing? Keep going. Right. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, really get that, get that, uh, what's it called? Hammies. Yeah, the glue, <laughs> the glue stretches. Yeah. <laughs> you like these hamstrings? <laughs> yeah. Ghost tube seems to like it. <laughs> Ghost tube seems to like it. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Last time Ghost Tube said that to us, Jared was like twerking to the camera. <laughs> Literally said that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oxo Castle, that was. Yeah. Did a lot did that happen a lot of the time in the laundry? When you weren't being supervised? Did you become aroused? This one's freaking me out. <laughs> Ned Kelly over there? Mm, or Red Kelly? Or Red Kelly? Yeah, Red Kelly's the father. He was here, not Ned Kelly yet. Red Kelly. Confuse me because they have a Ned Kelly poster beside it. Ned and Red. You know, your name's Red and you name your son Ned. 
Miss. Miss? You're talking to me? You want to talk to me? I want to know a name. Please? If you want. Here, let's do this. I'm going to set this right here. Jared and I are going to step in this room over here. Oh, am I in it? Yes, you're in it. You're perfectly in it. All right. Just don't step too far to your left. If you stay right there, you're good. Okay, okay. So the guys are just leaving me alone in this room with Fine. the aroused ghost phone. Um, do you know what that is? I'm holding one. Now I've heard some stories about this place and some of them are quite nasty. I'm not sure you'd want to talk about that. Can you tell me why you are here though? I just heard the noise again. That beeping sound? Yeah. I don't know what it could be. There's nothing electronic in here. Something was on my hand as well. It could be a bug, but. Um. It's coming from behind the bearded man. Yeah. Could be the window. There's movement in here. Are you in that room with Amy moving around? If you're in here with me, can you make a very distinct noise? Maybe you could tap on something again, something like this. You know, I may sound a little bit weird to you when I talk, when I speak, and that's because I'm from America. I don't know. They don't know what that is, right? <laughs> you don't know what America is? So the thud in the wall back there. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us where you're from. It's pretty quiet. It is. Do you want to... What do you think? you think we should try our luck with, one, with, with another spot? I think so. Yeah, we, we had good stuff in the nights. Yeah, maybe we should go back to the night's room and see. The night's room in the hospital. So we moved over here to the night's room. Uh, this is a part of the prison that was used for many different purposes throughout the years, but now is used as like a meeting hall and event room. Sounds like the storm is, whoa. That door just opened. It opened? I just closed that. Do you think the wind could blow that door open? If this other door was open, I would say yes, because the wind could blow through, but no. it's not, so. It's closed. I locked that door. So there's no wind coming from within here. Did you latch that door? I didn't latch it, because I can't, but. Um, yeah, how would I'll, it suck it's, out? it's a pretty heavy door too. Yeah, yeah I'll do it. Um, you, yeah, I can't you got the see. It's, a, it's actually a really, really heavy door though. Like, so for this to get blown open from the inside, but I guess we can test it. Yeah, it definitely wasn't latched. It didn't make a sound when it opened, it just all of a sudden. We can just see if it opens again. Yeah. Is it latched now or is it just... To be honest, I couldn't see. But let me try. I yeah, couldn't I'm latch it. He doesn't say if it's if it's. We'll leave it unlatched to see if it blows open again. Yeah. Okay. Because if it if it was the wind, it should just be able to be pushed open. We'll leave it like that and see if it see if it blows open again. Because that was weird. I did hear the wind when that came open, so I thought, yeah, more than likely it is the wind. But there you go. Look at that. Science. <laughs> <laughs>
Like I said, this room was used for many different things. It's now a meeting hall and event area. And right over on the other side is the hospital. And we have the tripwire laid out, the EMF tripwire laid out straight down that hallway all the way to where the hospital actually is. So if the nurse is here that we've been told about, you're more than welcome to come in here and talk to us. We'll come in there here very shortly, but we'd love to speak to you. I'm gonna sit down. You can sit down this end. Why don't you sit in the same chair as the Estes chair? That's a good point. Because we had so many things come through. Uh, Tripwire's going off. Is it? Uh-huh. If there's someone out there, you can come in here. Don't be scared of us. Maybe you recognize us. Maybe you recognize Ryan. We've sat him down again in the same spot we did a little while ago and you came in here to talk to us a whole lot. Maybe you can go towards some of the lights on the table again. Well, Thank you for making a noise. I've heard there's a little boy who likes to play in here. If you're here, we're very open to playing as well. We want to make new friends tonight. Can you use the energy from the weather, the storm, to make something happen, to show us that you're here? To prove to us that you can still see us and hear us? What was that? It's like some scraping noise or something. Can you come closer? Can you come in here? Sit at the table with me. You can even move some of this stuff. Come down the hallway there. Can you tell us where we are, what building we're in? What this place is called? You're hiding. You don't have to hide from us. You can come out and... and... Heard you like to play under the table. Maybe you're down there. Do you want Jared to get under the table again? Oh, please no. Who was talking to us earlier when we were he in here with Allison and CAG? Oh. Tripwire? Yep. I, I thought I said I should go, like a woman saying I should go. Yeah, I definitely heard I should. Dead. Dead. Can you tell us what colors are on the table? What do you see? I did hear a noise down here. Hi, it's me. Hi, it's me. That's what I heard. Yeah. Hi, it's me. Hello. Yeah. It's 
said fractions. Oh. I should never. And we just had a tripwire. Are you in the hallway over there? Do you want me to come over or do you want Jared to come over and get our... Hi. You are... Our physical? Do you want to give us a checkup? I do feel like one of you boys should go in there. <laughs> We're moving there, Ryan, and get, get your leg a check up. Yeah. Using the ghost tube as a light here. All right, nurse, you got some patients coming in. If I lay down right here on the exam table, will the nurse take a look at me? I'm laying down. Can you check out my leg? Can you check out my leg? I'm laying here waiting for you to come and give me a diagnosis. This is the hospital, right? Uh, what? Something out here. Hello? On the table? Uh, something just made a noise right next to me. <laughs> if you're in here with me, can you just go to the lights on the floor? That way I can see you. I heard you. Go, go, go. go there. Uh, I'll come a few steps closer to you. This is where I heard you. How about this? Can you go out there to Amy? And make one of those things that has the lights. Can you make the lights turn on? Any one of these lights, please. Or how about this? One of those things that's sitting on the table in that room, can you smack it off the table? That'd probably scare her pretty well. You know, it's weird, the voices have slowed down. Yeah. It was pretty constant there for a little while. Yeah, it's gone a bit quiet now. <laughs> Bored. I'm not sure what that was actually. <laughs> it sounds like it's a board. Board. Well, since you're not talking to us in the hospital, we're going to go back out here where stuff's happening. Where there's people that are trying to make stuff happen. Watch your step, there's a few. The door? We heard that you set that off over there. You made the lights turn on. It's raining outside now, pretty heavily. Maybe you can use that for energy. All right then, thank you for trying at least. Goodbye. Ending on that. All right. Dude, I'm sorry that the rain's being <laughs> Huh? I'm sorry that the rain's being That's all right. It happens, this is what happens on someone. You never know that you might get AVPs in the rain noise or something. Oh, oh, we're still filming. Thank you. Can you get closer to that for me? Make sure it wasn't me, cause I 
hit this chair. There you go. It's not you. What happens when you stand up, Amy? Me? Can you stand up for me? All right, let me sit as if I was sitting. I think I, was, well, I was holding the camera like this. I think I went like that to stand up, maybe. Okay, yeah, that wasn't you then. I don't, I'm, I don't think I touched the table. Maybe I did. Possibility. I'm pretty Possibly. sure I was holding this like this in yeah. my left hand though, but maybe I don't know. That camera will be able to see you stand up so it'll know. Yeah, if I, if I didn't up. touch the table, then I don't think it was me. Hmm. But it happens sometimes, you know, it's interesting that this location, I mean, it is really cool, but the areas that they said are the most active and are very active, a lot of the areas that are very active now do not have a roof on it any longer or never had a roof on it to begin with, like the rec yard. But one of the old cell blocks, all the cells are gone and the roof is gone when they re or when they renovated and turned it into a butter factory so unfortunately that's the that's the only disappointing part about the rain the heavy rain is that it's a lot of areas now that we can't investigate not without some heavy bags to put over the cameras and getting drenched yeah listen to that <laughs> dude this time of the year is normally like warm weather for us yeah, skies. there's been mad floods and storms. This is not normal. This is bad luck. <laughs> Paranormal Quest comes to Australia. We bring bad weather. But yeah, once that rain stops, I think it would be really interesting if I went and sat for just a little bit by myself inside that cell to see if anything happens, so. All right, so I have all this stuff set up in the cell behind me and I'm getting ready to do a solo here in the cell that is left here at the old Kilmore jail and amy and jared are gonna leave me in here alone they are gonna lock the door I'm locking you in good luck thank you you ready i'm ready let's do it thank you there's a lot of lights in here that one will play music but there's also this one this one right here, if you get close to it, it'll light up. It's like a lantern. I'm sure you used a lantern to get through the dark. Are you over there trying to grab the cigarettes? Are you over there trying to grab the whiskey? I set it over here on this table. I'm all alone in here. I'm by myself. I've traveled all the way from a distant country. I'm from a place called the United States of America. A few minutes ago, before I started with the cameras on, you touched that right there, the thing that is sitting on the bunk with the weird looking. I heard a voice. I want you to, if you want to give me a message, I would love to hear from you. All right, so. Hello? The wind has died down, so I don't know what that was. It sounded like a door moving. Are you trying to open the cell? What's your name? My name is Ryan, and I've come from a very long distance away. I've brought a lot of different lights and a lot of different things that you can get close to to use to show me that you're here. 
There's a lot of people that believe you can still hear me and you can still interact with me and still show me that you're here. And I would love if you would do that for me. What do I do with those? I'll put them over here. Oh, here they are. I brought you something. Brought you a couple of things, actually. That you probably would like. First of which, it's a bottle of whiskey. This is a small little bottle, and I know it looks weird, but I promise you, what's inside of it is whiskey and you can touch this or grab it it's me I'm going to leave it right there for you to grab can you grab a hold of that for me can you reach out and grab the whiskey I also have some tobacco here Wounded. for you. Wounded. Now earlier when we were doing that Estes session, I had actually captured or heard what sounded like someone talking about someone being shot. So. Was someone wounded here? Was someone shot? Would you like a... I know this looks a little bit too perfect for you. You probably used to hand roll these things. This is a cigarette. I'm gonna put this one right here. And you can grab the cigarette if you'd like it. Guys, I don't, I'm not quite sure what's going on because it was very creepy and active earlier when we first got here and when we performed the live stream with Adelaide's Haunted Horizons, we got quite a bit of relevant responses and activity, but pretty much ever since then, ever since I grabbed my cameras and started filming this particular investigation, everything has felt very quiet. Tell you what, here in a few minutes, I'm going to leave an abandonment set up in here with all of this equipment and stuff. And we'll see if anything happens as I leave the cell for like 15, 20 minutes at the most. So help me. Do you need help? How can I help you? You know, if you're if you're a prisoner and you feel like you're stuck here, you shouldn't feel stuck here because the doors are not now, the door is shut right now, but the door is most of the time open and you can just come and go as you please. You can just walk right out of the cell. So I haven't really gotten much activity since I got in here. The ghost tube has said a couple of things, but nothing really that makes sense or nothing that really seems relevant. So because there's nothing going on, I think it's a good time to just try a mini abandonment, which is of course when we leave our cameras and equipment set up and alone to see what happens when an area is completely empty. And this being the last cell of the Kilmore Jail, I think it is very susceptible to not only intelligent activity, but possibly residual paranormal activity. So uh, leaving it alone, if it's something that doesn't want to interact with me, or maybe something that can't interact with me, it may trigger the equipment, it may say something, it may move something. 
And if it does, the cameras are gonna be here to catch it. So I'm gonna leave this set up and I'll be back here in just a short while. Since Dave isn't here and I'm here alone, I have to do the honors myself. <clears throat> I'm leaving! Bye. Teresa. Did you make something go off? Did you speak to me? Well, with that, I think the abandonment is a good place to actually call the night and end it here. I am going to pack this stuff up and we're going to head out from the Kilmore Jail here to another amazing haunted location here in Australia. Even though it was a little bit quiet tonight for this investigation for filming, I will say that we have filmed three so far here in Australia and you are not going to want to miss them because we captured some insane, incredible and amazing paranormal activity in some of the most haunted places in Australia. And it is exciting. It is fantastic. And you are going to love it. I want to thank Adelaide's Haunted Horizons for helping get us in here today. And I also want to thank Amy and Jared for helping me film this episode and for stepping up when uh, Dave was down with a sickness, like the Disturbed song. <laughs> Damn it. I almost made it. <laughs> Whoa. Music box is going off. That's a little strange. Is that you? Whoa, Deadlight just died. What's happening? My Deadlight's freaking out right now. It's not like dying, it's like blinking. I've never seen it do that before. Normally when it dies, it just dims to a, the point where it doesn't stay on anymore, but this is like flashing and then it totally turned off. Can you make the music play again? Whoa. No way. <laughs> Thank you. Who is this? Is, are you... Are you an inmate? Are you a prisoner? Deadlight's just flashing again. What in the is going on with this thing. Thank you. I don't know what's happening right now. Like, I've never seen these lights do that. They don't flash when they die. They just go dim and then go dead. Okay. So you can play the music if you'd like. You can play the music as much as you want. Step right in front of it, it'll keep going. Wow. Whoa. Thought I saw something right there. Um. All right. I am quite literally, what a way. Wow, this keeps flashing on and off. This is bizarre. Never seen this, these lights react this way. I wanna thank Amy and Jared for helping me film this when Dave was down and sick and couldn't make it and helping create this episode so that 
everything ran smoothly. And this is kind of bizarre because, again, as we are leaving, as we are having to be out of here, all of the activity is kicking up and the equipment is going off. So if you're ever in Kilmore, Victoria in Australia, you have to stop by the old Kilmore jail. We are on um, Facebook. So if you go to Mystic Realm of Jackal, we're on Facebook and certainly there, there will be links to our webpage and we have tours, uh, monthly public tours, but also if you're a private investigative group, you're more than welcome to come and um, hire the jail as well. Uh, yeah, through us for that as well. So definitely, yeah, check us out on Facebook. But with that guys, we wanna thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being an amazing part of the Paranormal Quest family. Church. Church. The church is where our base camp is set up. There's a church on property here, and the church is where our base camp is set up with all the equipment. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna go to the church to tear this stuff down and to break down the camera. But I wanna thank you guys for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you did, you're a trooper. We really appreciate you. It helps us more than you know. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new here and turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video. And if you want to support us and help us out, hit the, hit the like button and share the video with your friends and family. If you want to support us additionally, subscribe to our Patreon or you can become a member of our YouTube channel. Until next time, guys, thank you so much. Stay safe. and We'll see you on our next adventure on our paranormal quest. Bye.